we've been having an amazing time in Sri Lanka. After exploring the cultural triangle in Anuradhapura, we made our way to central Sri Lanka. So, we're taking the bus from Anuradhapura to Kandy. We're super excited because it's a really comfortable bus. It's air conditioned, we have our own seats, there aren't people climbing all over each other. And we thought we were getting a great deal. $2.50 per person, except they also charge us an extra seat for our bags. Kandy is a busy place and famous for its Temple of the Tooth, a temple said to contain a tooth from Buddha smuggled into Sri Lanka in the hair of a princess. Well, we skipped a visit to the temple since we spent so much time seeing cultural sites during our previous week. Instead, we enjoyed getting lost in the bustle of the busy city. There's a feeling of sensory overload as you walk around the central market area, dodging speeding buses, tuk-tuks, and animals. Here, we are visiting the post office to pick up some stamps, because of course, we're sending out some postcards. While in Candy, we decided to take a cooking lesson. Unroasted curry powder. Today, I'm taking a cooking class in Sri Lanka. I'm really excited because we've been eating so much rice and curry, and I'm finally going to learn how to cook it, so that the cameraman can enjoy it. Sulochana put me to work. This meant real hands-on learning and taking notes. Although Sri Lankan cuisine may seem complicated or complex, it's actually pretty basic. The ingredients are all natural. You just have to know how to use them. Every curry is a little different and open to interpretation. You combine the colorful ingredients and make it how you like it. One of the hardest parts was... Making coconut milk. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't hard at all, but cracking open this hard little coconut took some muscle. After a few good whacks, the coconut split open and the coconut water released. Then, step two with the coconut. I am getting the coconut meat out of the coconut shell. It's hard work! Do you have all the questions? <laughs> Ooh, my hammer. currently making the marinade for the curry chicken. There's a whole garlic, including the skin, a piece of ginger, cardamom, cloves. It's gonna be delicious, and this is hard work. I was so happy to see that we'd be cooking over an open fire, the old-fashioned way. When the oil was good and hot, the cooking began. We use beautiful color and we taste. Now stir it, bottom to top, bottom to top. This chicken curry is looking awesome. And I'm really excited for our vegetable curries as well. I'm learning so much, everything's so colorful. And the best part is going to be eating it. With the help and guidance of Sulochana, I've cooked my first Sri Lankan meal and it looks really delicious and I'm super excited to try all of it. Here we have lentil curries, green bean curry, beetroot curry, love the color. Here we have some rice, some papadans, and chicken curry. Here it is, the final presentation of all of my hard work. Time to eat. The food was especially delicious. Maybe because I made it. And when we finished, we reloaded and went for round two. We took supposedly the world's most beautiful train ride from Kandy to Nuwara Elia, right into the heart of tea country. The train ride did not disappoint. We spent a couple of hours hanging out of the windows and doors. It was so much fun. Oh, man. 
and that's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's really pretty. We spent a rainy day hiking in Nuara Elia with this local guide. His name is Gihan and yes. he's incredible. He has so much knowledge about the area and the history of Sri Lanka that we learned so much. We walked probably 19 kilometers, over 25,000 steps, and in those six hours, we hiked up and down the tea fields, we talked to the local villagers, we talked to the faces, the people who pick the tea that we drink. It was such an amazing experience to see where our tea actually comes from, besides the tea bag. Two things to know. Nuara Elia is in the mountains, and the weather would be far cooler than anywhere else in Sri Lanka. We were not exactly prepared for the chilly, wet air, but we made the best of it. The tea plantations are a beautiful thing to see, even on a cloudy and rainy day. But another highlight was passing through the tiny villages in between and saying hi to the children. Round and round. Salute. They eagerly came out to see us, their smiles so warm and genuine. Of course, it helped that Uncle Gihan brings them candy. And I was treated to a special pochu, or bindi. This is a forehead decoration worn in South Asia. Traditionally, it's a bright dot of red color placed in the center of the forehead. The bindi is said to retain energy and strengthen concentration. It's also said to protect against demons or bad luck. But it didn't stop there. The lady at the next house proceeded to add additional symbolic markings to my forehead. My cameraman also got in on the ceremony. He didn't really have a choice. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And here's something interesting. At the top of one of the tea hills stands a lone tree. And in this tree, Gihan keeps his pet centipedes. He collects them from all around the area and places them into a cavity where they are safe from birds and extreme weather. I wasn't really a fan before, but I have a new appreciation for these arthropods. So after a quick two days in Nuara Elia, we continued our journey on the world's most beautiful train ride to Ella. Ella is a bit more touristy, but it's still so beautiful. And here we are at the famous Nine Arches Bridge. We just saw the train passing by and it was so much fun. People are waving out the windows and lots of people walking around taking photos. While the Nine Arches Bridge is beautiful, it is a famous tourist destination, which means lots of people. But here's an adventure vid pro tip. Rent a motorbike or grab a tuk-tuk and go over to the smaller train bridge in Demondara. It may be less impressive, but you'll be the only ones there and you can hang out in the river beneath the train tracks. Locals can tell you when the train is coming, but expect a 20 to 30 minute delay around here. up Little Adam's Peak for sunrise, along with about a hundred other people. And although the sun wasn't interested in giving us a show, we enjoyed the view anyway. So having been on an extensive tea country hike, naturally we thought we should visit one of the many factories to learn more about the tea processing. Now people, this whole land smells like tea. It's amazing, and I'm serious. So this is a very pleasant environment to be in. It's amazing and I'm always fascinated to see how things are made. I may love coffee, but I'm also a proud tea drinker. We enjoyed learning about the different kinds of tea, how they all come from the same plant, and although the factory processes are mostly automated, tea harvesting at a single tea company requires thousands of tea picking hands. Seeing this process from hand picking to the teacup really made me appreciate the hard work behind every single cup of tea. This is the nighttime tea. Very mild. Very mild. There's postcards from Sri Lanka. That's right. If you want a postcard from Adventure Viv, send me a DM and one will be on its way. Adventure Viv. Adventure Viv.
best part is going to be me eating it. That's right, cameraman. You better appreciate this. That guy. What are you doing? Just started recording us filming. It's kind of weird. Now he's walking away because I caught him. Double water. 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 Double water.